Hello and welcome to episode 5 of My Synth Story. After the crazy ride of 2014, the year 2015 started with a proper synth DIY project. I didn't just want to build kits anymore, but wanted to create something of my own. But I couldn't do that from the ground up because I lacked the necessary electronic skills. So I came up with a fun compromise. I ordered two Atari Punk console kits, a PTD Lay kit and a Winky Pedals Fuzz Guitar Effect kit. And then I added some potentiometers and switches for passive mixing and cross modulation. And ta-da! I had my own DIY drone box. Of course I also filmed a demo video for that, although that was a year later. After this project I created another video for a CME X-Key MIDI keyboard. This time it wasn't just a review though, but also a sound demo. Now, I'm no keyboard wizard, but that sounds alright I guess. Good times. As you remember from my previous episode, I met a lot of people in the year 2014 and I wanted to continue doing that in 2015. So when Bustle Instruments wrote me that they would attend Musikmesse in Frankfurt in April 2015, I packed my bags and set out to visit my very first music trade show and of course report from it. I filmed, edited and uploaded 20 videos in two days and it was just a big beautiful rush. This was the year when Eurorack got a lot of mainstream attention and many manufacturers shared one big booth organized by Schneider's Laden. You could say it was a Schneider's Laden Eurorack super booth. I interviewed Bastel Instruments about their newly announced eye-catching wood paneled Eurorack system. I talked to Abstract Data, to Coma Electronic, to Vermona and many more and actually even managed to interview Dieter Döpfer himself. Since half a year I have internet now at home. I have no musical instrument at home. I have no modular system. I have no instrument. After that I strolled the aisles for a bit when my contact from CME approached me. We had never met in person so it was great to put a face to a name. He told me they had just finished a keyboard demonstration at their booth featuring Jordan Rudess and if I wanted to meet him. I was like sure. But then on the way to the booth I thought, well, what do I actually talk to Jordan Rudess about? I mean, he's this keyboard wizard and I barely know that the white keys on the piano play the C major scale or something. But there he was already and oh my god, what do I say, what do I say? Well, I went with the first thing that popped into my head. The secret of your beard, how do you grow it uh, so smoothly and that it becomes like that? Yes, well I look in the mirror and I concentrate. All right. It's a lot of focus right okay. in the center of the beard and I've been doing that for a year. Other notable events from Musikmesse 2015. I first met Cuckoo and gave him a sticker, but this was another one of my starstruck moments and I wouldn't blame him if he doesn't remember that. I also had lunch with Paul Tuss from Aero Instruments, you know, the most fun online synthesizer store from which I would keep ordering in the future. Actually this time in 2015 there was this intense energy in the air. Roland had just entered the Eurorack game and there was this huge spotlight on the whole modular synth industry and everybody was excited. You know, all of a sudden, those quirky electronic instruments were relevant to a big audience. I was really motivated and luckily, just one month later in May 2015, another modular synth gathering would take place. The Happy Nobbing Modular Synth Meetup in Fischbach, Germany, which was also the hometown of my beloved Tiny Sizer. This was not a trade show, however. It was a user meeting, allowing entrance only to people who brought their own modular synths. So it was a weekend just, you know, full of nerd talk and jamming with cool people. And it's really unfortunate that I haven't managed to attend it again in the past couple of years. At 
that event I also got serious gas for a 5U modular system which I started to build shortly afterwards. Around that time my YouTube channel also reached 10,000 subscribers and I'm sorry. Oh, it's a message from Bob again. Hello, Bob. You've got a question. Um, how come you gained 10k subscribers in two years, but now four years later in 2019 you're only up to 20k? What happened that made the growth slow down like that? Well, Bob, good question actually, because in 2015 also this happened. Hey everyone, just wanted to check in real quick. I haven't posted a YouTube video in quite a while because I was moving apartments and things were just taking a little longer than expected. Yes, my YouTube content creation had quite abruptly stalled due to some changes in my personal and professional life. And while I still love this new apartment, it just didn't have a proper space for synthesizers at all. You know, back in that video, the synths were in my living room and it was not a pretty sight. So my inspiration took a dive and with the little time I had left for synth stuff in general, making music videos for YouTube wasn't a high priority, unfortunately, anymore. And in the second half of 2015, I only produced something like 11 videos. But that did not mean that things were going badly. It was just a different time in my life and sometimes priorities shift a little. I actually played my first live show in August 2015 together with Volk from Strategic Tape Reserve and that was a fun experience, so we made performing publicly a regular thing since then. I was also active on Instagram and posted videos of mushrooms. Or a picture of me while slacklining. Or a picture of my feet while producing tracks for my chiptune album Super Dolomiti Crunch, which would be released years later in 2018. But yeah, the YouTube channel was in a bit of a slump. But I'm here now in 2019, so something must have happened since 2015, right? Well, there's only one way to find out. Stay tuned for episode 6 of My Synth Story next week. And thanks a lot for watching. Oh.